Yo. A million Scoville. I'm gonna put two drops. Oh, I felt it. I felt it already, that was hot. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hot Pop Boys. Andrew, we just got back from Beijing, China. Beijing, like a thousand years ago, they uh, they took off their hats and they wanted to eat lamb meat. Okay. But they couldn't roast it. Right. Because they were in the middle of war. Right. Turn it into hot pot. Since then, hot pot is just pew, 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 pew. And today, David, we are very, very excited and very hungry to cover one style of hot pot that we have not done before, which is shabu shabu. So David, we're in Alhambra, okay, and this spot, Nabe Mono, just opened, and you know why I'm extra excited about Nabe Mono? Because they have really, really high quality meats, man. So in this video, we're gonna try all eight broths of Shabu Shabu that they have here. We're gonna here. be breaking it down for you guys. Eight of them, and then we're gonna try all the cuts of meat, man. It's gonna be crazy. I'm so excited. Nabe, Nabe Mono, Mono Shabu, Shabu Shabu, let's go. We are looking at the entire beef section, one through four, four being the highest level. Yo, You've man. got the beef chuck, yeah. short rib, ribeye, Kobe gold ribeye. Okay, this is your goma, AKA your Japanese sesame sauce. If you've ever been to hot pot at like a Chinese spot, they're also probably gonna have sesame sauce too, but this is the Japanese version. Here we have ponzu, kind of like a sweet soy sauce made with yuzu fruit juice, oranges, Mirin rice wine. There's all a bunch of other things inside of here. This is a flavor that you're probably not gonna get at a lot of other styles of hot pot. This only comes at Shabu Shabu. Guys, this is the chuck meat. This is probably the most affordable. This is gonna get the job done. If you want beef, this is all you need. As you can see here, this is like pure red, so there's no marbling, even though there's a piece of fat here. Marbling is only when the fat is worked into the meat. Hey, Chuck is a very like get her done type name. Dude, <laughs> like like Charles Barkley's like, hey Chuck, get yeah. her done. Hey, Chuck beef gets it done it, too. It's a get her done type of beef. You know, they use uh, Chuck and pot roast a lot. Um, you can slow cook it, but it looks good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. That literally had no sauce, just in the kombu, and I thought it was actually really tasty. This is kombu, the traditional clear broth. It's made with a piece of Japanese seaweed, and this is also the base for all the other broths here. This kombu here at Nabe Mono actually has additional flavoring from bonito flakes. Short rib. So this is the certified Angus beef short rib. It's uh, moderate in marbling. Out of the four levels, four being the highest, this is number two, spicy miso. Now this is actually a house blend of spices topped with some roasted sesame seeds. That's tasty, that's tasty, man. I don't know if I can do Chuck anymore. We have to move on to the prime ribeye. This is the USDA prime ribeye, three out of four, high marbling. Uh, for this one, I'm going straight into uh, the pork bone. Okay. All right, this is the pork bone broth. You know, it's a bone broth that's very trendy right now, but this is gonna give you the flavor of like a tonkatsu broth, so it's kind of thicker. Mm, tastes like a ribeye steak. So for our gold Kobe ribeye. This is very rich marbling, melt in your mouth, madness. This almost looks like a, almost like a camel pattern. David, choose one of these pots. This is spicy pork bone and this is tomato. Here you got your tomato broth. That's fresh tomatoes cooked down with a house blend of spices, very healthy and light. Here we have the spicy pork bone broth. This is a house blend of spices mixed in with your classic pork bone broth. Tomato. I know you like tomato. tomato. I knew you I'm a fan tomato. of tomato. I like tomato egg. I like tomato. I actually like Western tomato soup too. I gotta be really, really gentle with this thing. I don't want to lose it in the broth. You, you know, know what? One difference. One difference is between uh, Japanese style and Chinese style. I know you gotta babysit the Japanese style a lot more. I mean, even at expensive hot pot spots, they are gonna serve some Kobe, and you do need a babysitter. You can't let it cook too long. Fitting that we're in LA, Kobe. Kobe Bryant, Kobe beef. Did you see how gently I'm just swooshing it like that? I'm, I'm taking it easy. It was so tender and so marbled and so fatty and it kind of melted in my mouth to the point. It just went so quickly. You know what I got to mean? It's kind of crazy. It was so fleeting. It was so fleeting. I got to say that my two favorite bras so far is the tomato and guess what? Just the combo. Hold up, man. Let me try the tomato one, man. Let me get the chuck. If chuck is good in the tomato, oh, that's, true. that's when you know it's good. Could you put the Kobe in the tomato? I mean, it's, it's gotta be good. 
All right, Chuck. It's good, man, it was good. I'll be honest, man, when you guys have amazing cuts of meat, I feel like the broth, I'm saying it takes second. It's second to the meat, right? The meat is gonna really make the bite. This is Kurobuta pork. It's purebred Berkshire pork. We've done enough food videos that that's fancy. I don't know what that means. Clearly just, you don't know what I it just means, know, clearly. I just know that a lot of the good restaurants in New York use Berkshire pork. And this is Jadori chicken breast, free range, humanely raised. Jadori, I believe, means from the ground. It's, this is a spicy miso. I feel like a lot of people are gonna get the spicy miso because they're gonna want, you know, a little bit more flavor from their broth. Usually I wouldn't get chicken with my uh, hot pot, shabu shabu. I wouldn't usually, but that's really good. This, this gotta go in the pork bone. Oh. And that only makes sense that the pork meat goes in the pork bone. You know what? The pork with the sesame, I think, I think that's a great combination. Here they got seafood as well. Uh, we are looking at scallops. Bassa. Bassa. We got some gigantic shrimps. Um, mussels, fish cake. Black tiger shrimp. Black tiger shrimp. All right, I'm, I'm going in. These are probably the two uh, most different looking broths, right? Yeah. Because you have the sukiyaki and soy milk. Soy milk broth. This is something I've never had before. I've never seen this at a shabu shabu spot, but apparently it is fairly traditional, so I'm pretty excited to try it. All right, here we got the sukiyaki broth. Um, this is a sweet soy sauce based broth. Um, sukiyaki also is kind of a type of nabe mono on its own, but here they have the broth version. Boom. Boom. The one thing I heard, and this is the same is true actually for any type of hot pot, Different I would say words. roots early. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the things that are take a long, like carrots, you gotta throw this in like, as the first thing. Your noodles and your starches, you wanna put that in later. Ah. That's really that's really for the end. It's almost like the fried rice at the end of the banquet. I feel like for most things it doesn't matter except when it comes to the seafood. The seafood is really where you get the flavor kind of stuck in the broth. So that So you say put seafood later, seafood later, yeah. starches later. But, but I feel like everything else, I don't know, I just throw it in at one time. Yo, Anna, while we're waiting, take a look at some of those appetizers. What are we looking at? These are shrimp popsicles. This is their most popular appetizer. Well, you know, shrimp. it's nice to have appetizers along with like the soup that we're eating. Right. Nice to have just a little something to munch on. The whole piece of shrimp. That was so simple too. It was just like two, three shrimp between, mashed together. Between that and the gold Kobe, it looks like the posters. Chicken, Chicken karage. karage. This is like something I get everywhere I go. Mm. Anytime gotcha. I get a chance. It's uh, a must. Because it's like mostly, I think, I wanna say it's just chicken thigh. And you know what I like is that they're not giving you any white breast meat pieces. That's like a waste. Karage, always dark meat. Soy, Soy chicken, chicken wing. wing. All right, so here's the trick. You know, you twist, you break the bone, you twist it off. Now all you have is this beautiful piece Let of me meat. do it. For once, I'm gonna do it. Twist off, yeah, there we go. Not bad Okay, I got a little like... Time. Wow, I'm kind of a believer in your method now. You get the absolute best bite when you do that. Look at that, clean it off. Cold tofu, Japanese style. You know, I really like the Chinese cold tofu. I know the Japanese style always comes with this uh, ginger. Oh man, you got the big old chunk. You went with the extra large. I'm pretty interested to try the soy milk broth, David. This is something I've never seen. I took seen. the tiger prawn. I've never seen this at a shabu shabu spot um, or any hot pot spot for that matter. I've never seen a milk broth. Yo, Andrew, these mushrooms oh, will burn your mouth. They retain so much heat. Yeah, they're juicy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this scallop is cooked. I'm pretty interested. Oh, this tiger prom is super good. Yo, I'm kind of jealous that you had that. Oh, but, uh, here. You can have the one in the sukiyaki. Bruh. You know what it is, man? The tiger prawn really eliminates like any negative side of shrimpiness. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't taste shrimpy. All right, let me get this. Uh, I got to go in the sukiyaki, man, because this uh, tiger prawn is definitely cooked. It's really interesting because sukiyaki is its own dish, but this is just sukiyaki flavored shabu shabu. Yeah. Oh, the sukiyaki is amazing. Oh my goodness. I, I, I said earlier it was the kombu, tomato, and now the sukiyaki is, has jumped way up the charts. They have a great seafood supplier, man. Well, let's try the noodle. Mmm, no. 
sugiyaki broth. That was hella good because you know what it is? Everything soaks up soy sauce. No, flavor. it might have been the sukiyaki one. It's very it, simple. It, but it, man. That was the last one we tried. Wow. It might have jumped way up to the top. All right, so David, we've tasted all eight broths. Every all, appetizer. They were all unique in their own way, but we got to pick one broth to stick with for the rest of the video. Each got to be different. Going with tomato. Go I'm going with tomato. Which one do you think I'm picking? We talking about sukiyaki. <laughs> I was gonna pick the kombu because it really allows the ingredients to shine, uh -huh. but these two flavors are not available at Chinese hot pots. You can get a tomato broth I like at, Chi at Chinese hot pot, but it doesn't, this one obviously it was like, uh, it was the Japanese version. <laughs> I liked it better, I don't know. You know, I could see that this tomato broth is a little bit thicker and more deeper red than a lot of the Chinese ones. The Chinese ones are a little bit more transparent, a little bit more like you can see through. The sukiyaki though, man, you're right that it does it does have a very strong flavor, but it's just, I don't know, it's so good. Y'all, I already had the chuck. I'm going back to short rib. Ooh, you're going straight for the meat. I'm going to go straight for the carbs and put a little ramen in there. Oh, that's true. Fair. Wait, David, Dave, you never made your sauce. Oh! You never made a sauce. All right, you're right. I have my base goma. I've got my base yuzu panzu. I'm going to go uh, this. Daikon typically goes in the uh, yuzu panzu. Okay. Garlic one. I think that's just gonna go on my plate. Wow. You know what this, I, I like a lot. Yes, I agree with that. Oh, chili oil, and uh -huh. Boom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so definitely I gotta hit it with some green onions, absolutely, okay. And then I'm actually gonna hit my sesame sauce, my goma sauce with a little hint of uh, garlic right there, boom. The extra spicy million Scoville sauce, this oil right here that you have to ask for. I'm gonna put two drops. Oh, I felt it. I felt it already, that was hot. Parabuda pork in my Million Scoville sesame sauce. Oh, that's creeping. Man, yeah. it's not even like a Sichuan, style. It's, it's a totally different hot. Here, I just put two more drops in. All right, I'm doing All right. it. I got the oh, you, that's, like, that's five drops. Oh. Let's get it, David, goodbye. I actually really like that sauce. Yeah, ours is like nice kind of like back heat. You know there's different types of hot. There's a front oh. one and a back one. That's a, that's a back one. Man, there was four different types of meat. Obviously, you guys, if you look at the uh, the Kobe gold one, it's $63. You know, I definitely think it does taste different. If you want a different experience, you know, that would definitely be it. Trying to show a certain somebody a really good time, maybe you get the Kobe and make sure they know how much it costs. Japanese restaurants in general can sometimes be so traditional and uh, somewhat intimidating, but not in like a bad way. It's just like, you know, you almost want to follow the customs exactly to how like, you know, the master chef has kind of set it up. I feel like Nabe Mono, it's like traditional flavors, mm -hmm. but the presentation is super accessible. Yeah. Where it's like, that's like a different comp, because usually you're going to go with, with traditional and then they're yelling at you when you walk in, they're banging the gong. Mm -hmm. I think when you're raised, like, you know, sometimes going to all you can eat um, spots, you don't really learn to appreciate meat quality. Because it's not even, even the, 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 the meat quality at all you can eat, shabu, all you can eat hot pot, that's not even gonna be as good as the chuck. Okay. So it's like, I think as I got a little bit older, I learned to appreciate different cuts, and they do taste pretty significantly different. Between the short rib and the prime rib, those are like pretty good options, you know, for if you don't wanna ball out. I, I feel like shabu shabu, uh, like the traditional style is definitely like quality over quantity. Maybe you won't order as much meat, but the meat that you do get is gonna be really, really good. I think it's funny because Shabu Shabu is one of like the most loved types of hot pots in the world, and it's pretty simple. Like they don't give you that many sauces. There's not a sauce bar of like 12 different things. Obviously like at the nice Chinese spots, you're gonna have those options, which is cool too, but there's something really like kind of beautiful about just having two sauces, a little bit of condiments, you know, just having a really nice cut of meat, having just one small pot of like really good broth, you know? Like it's not trying to do too much. And, and sometimes with less options, there's more. Honestly, David, look how artisanal this is. Would I be doing this at a Chinese hot pot spot? I wouldn't be you, I wouldn't be taking my time. I think I love hot pot because it really hits your soul. And it's really like a, 
It's a comfort food. You know how you know hot pot's good? Because a lot of like stews are supposed to be very medicinal. The whole idea of like a soup, like you drink a soup when you're sick, you know, uh, drink a soup to cure yourself. And here you actually have the soup right in front of you. You get your meat fix, and then you also kind of get your comfort slash healing fix. I gotta give a shout out to Shabu Shabu because you can drink the broth. Like I said, the quality of Shabu Shabu is like, man, it's so high, you can just drink the broth, you know, it's simple sauces, but it's just high right, quality. Okay. What, what is your, uh, what was your favorite thing? Obviously, barring uh, the Kobe ribeye, we have to take it out, Why, I, you know. Actually, man, you know what? To be honest, my favorite meat of them all was the ribeye, the regular ribeye. Yeah. That was my, actually, my favorite. You know what I loved about those tiger shrimp? Is that, man, this is, look how big the shrimp is. Huge, super juicy. Now here's the only thing about shrimp. You can't overcook it. Don't overcook the shrimp, man. That was such a dope meal. I'm so glad we were able to try everything. Obviously, hopefully this video was useful. It helps you just get more ideas, takes away some of the mystique. Please let us know in the comment section below if there are any other hot pot styles that we have yet to try. I know there's a ton. We gotta do a Vietnamese hot pot soon. And huge shout out to Nabe Mono here in Alhambra, California. If you guys are in the LA area, definitely check out Nabe Mono on Main Street in Alhambra. Quality is amazing. Brand new build out. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure you turn on your notifications, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, and until next time, we're out. Peace.